We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Slipcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Fantastic, Jared. Fo Ohio State football is here. It it is here, and this is in fact know your enemy. Uh, this is this is the show where we get to know our enemy. Uh, and Kyle, who who who's the who's the enemy who, this who, week? Who who, who? You, you mean the the who who who? Hoosiers. Yeah. <laughs> Indiana. Friend to me. We get, we get to start they, with Indiana this year. I, Indiana's not my friend. I'll just say it. Like, they're, they're not... I don't know if I'd call them an enemy, really. Like, I don't... I don't spend much time thinking about Indiana. And it, you might be wondering, Jared, are you talking about the football team or the state? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um... Definitely not our rival. Like not not even tongue in cheek. Not our rival. Just straight up. Who cares? <laughs> but yeah, Indiana here, Jared. Ohio State starting the season off on the road to Bloomington, Indiana. And yeah, let's let's waste no time. Let's waste no time here. Um, so Indiana Hoosiers, uh, had a had a great start to the season last year. Started three and zero. Had a had a uh, big win in their first game last last year against Illinois, but then that is kind of where it stopped. They then went uh, one and eight to finish the uh, <laughs> finish the. Did rest you say of the great year. win against Illinois? Yes, I know Illinois wasn't bad last year, but that sentence just doesn't make sense in my head. Oh no, <laughs> but yeah, let's let's get to know Indiana here, Jared, and uh, yeah, they. They lost uh, a lot of uh, a lot of talent. They had some quarterbacks. Talent, yes, yeah, yes, I know, Jared. They had. They I'm had, not being. This is know your enemy, not know your team th that we're nice to. They have two quarterbacks that transferred out, and then their third quarterback, Dexter Williams, who Buckeye fans should know from last year who came in for uh, during the uh, Ohio State Indiana game is still out with that non-contact knee injury that he suffered against Purdue last year. But the, a lot of people will look at this and like, oh, is this that Indiana where they, they may put up a lot of um, yardage and maybe put up a scare in the first half for, it, for against Ohio State? No. No, this this is not the same kind of Indian that we've seen in previous years. Listen, this is this is going to be pretty much like what we saw last year. It's just going to be a big blowout, and then you're going to see you're going to see a lot of second string, potentially even third string players uh, come into this game. Nomad is offering to start for Indiana quarterback. I, I assume well, you still have eligibility, right? Well, that's the question. Who is the who is going to be the starting quarterback for? Uh, Indiana. Uh, we now know who the starting quarterback is for Ohio State, but who is it for Indiana? Um, most likely, we, we it's should... looking like it's Kyle McCord. <laughs> yes, of course, case, it's Kyle McCord. We, we've, been, this, we've been saying that. <laughs> we have been saying this. <laughs> um, so, most likely for Indiana, it's going to be a Traven Jackson, who is the four-star quarterback that committed to Tennessee, redshirted last year transferred this year to Indiana and most likely is going to get the starting role there. Uh, Buckeye Esquire, better question. Who is Indiana's kicker? Um, Jack D Jackson. John John Johnson. They're John in a John heated... Johnson. It's, 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 it's Jack... Jackson and John Johnson, uh, they're in a heated battle, and we might not know until the opening kickoff. What's everyone drinking? Uh, excitement for football. That's what I'm. That's what I'm drinking. There you go. There's there's who your kicker is. Yeah. That's what I said. That's what I said. Nicholas <laughs> Redick. Nicholas Redick. That that's a hockey player. That is not a kicker. That's a hockey player. All right, but I will tell you. I'll tell you one one person that Ohio State really should look out for is Josh Henderson. I think Josh Henderson is a very good running back. Yeah, 
Very good. Um, and when he's had the chance to touch the ball, he's actually done pretty decent uh, last year. But the downside is the offensive line that he's going to be running behind. Not that good. They Four of their five returning starters are are back this year. And uh, newsflash, Jared, uh, they not, were not. not that good last year. I, Kyle literally wrote in our notes as he was researching Indiana um, the exact phrasing that Kyle put in the notes, and I cackled the first time I saw this. Four returning starters on the O-line, but they weren't good. Uh, that tells you what you need to know. Um, in response to Nicholas Radikic, uh Buckeye Esquire says he's definitely not a member of NATO. <laughs> yeah uh, pro- uh, probably not um, uh, so the, Indiana did hit the transfer portal uh, pretty hard this year and uh, some other notes that maybe maybe keep an eye out for uh, defensive back uh, Jameer Johnson a junior transfer from Texas who used to be a four star recruit and a name that I think is going to really surprise people, uh, I think this year, maybe not maybe not this weekend, but this year, is their senior transfer wide receiver from Fordham, uh, DeQuincy Carter. Uh, he he had a really really good season last year, over a thousand yards re- receiving, thirteen touchdowns. It, it's a name to keep out for. Now, will he do well against Ohio State? Maybe not, but definitely something to keep an eye out for. Yeah, um, you know, they're, you know, like we we kid and we joke about Indiana, but there are good players on this team. There's just like not enough good players on this team. If if we're being honest about it, uh, a lot of people remember Deshaun McCullough, who, you know, everyone thought was coming to Ohio State to play linebacker. Um, he's not on this team anymore. He transferred to Oklahoma. Um that's yeah i was i was in response to what uh chop daddy was asking in the in the chat there um it's again it's there there are good players on this team there aren't enough good players on this team um if you look at the big 10 i think there are three teams who are a cut above everyone else uh that is ohio state michigan and penn state I think those three teams are cut above everyone else in the in the league this year. Um, and I think there are three teams who are in the cut below. Um, uh, and I think Indiana is one of those teams in in the in that in that cellar. It's them. It's Northwestern and it's Rutgers. Um, are 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 living in the cellar of the Big Ten right now. Got my money on the fighting fits at Northwestern. No. Oh. Hey, sell, I know sell, you've been sell, gone sell. for a minute, Nomad. I got news. Sell, sell, sell. <laughs> I got news for you. Uh, um, yeah, about the fighting fits. Did so he no, leave? No, <laughs> no matter, are you, are you screwing with me right now? Okay. The, okay. the the other the other name to keep an eye out for who led the team last year in tackles was linebacker Aaron Casey. He had 85 tackles last year. Um, that's about it, honestly. <laughs> um, I think he, he's he's an okay linebacker, but yeah, now coming back as a as a um, senior this year, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how he does. Yeah, I, I mean he'll. I think he's one of I think he's probably like the unquestioned leader. I'll say this. They have a good I don't know if they have like a spectacular defensive tackle on this team, but they have a really good roster of defensive tackles. They're very deep at defensive tackle. Um, They'll have, I would say, a, a good rotation of a lot of like I said, like a lot of good players at the defensive tackle position. Um Again, there's there's not a Mike Hall among the group, but you know they're probably 
four, five, six guys deep at defensive tackle, just like good talent at defensive tackle. So something something else to keep an eye on. Yep, yep. It's probably one of the few positions on the roster where you can say like they have depth, where they have like rotational depth. And it's a good thing. If <laughs> they're rotating that depth because it's it's good, not because who cares. Mm-hmm. Are the are are they still Leoing or did that end in twenty twenty? Love each other, not the Knowles position. I, I I don't know. I I I've not been keeping up on my Indiana lore. If I'm being honest with you, Indiana so, Indiana has a good rubs shins and deep thought. Nope, but that does no no. So here's here, here's the question: Is there anything Indiana can do to make this close? Pray. It's, they are playing at home. They do have home field advantage. Uh, well, I will touch the rock. That's a thing they do, right? They're one of the touch the rock teams. They are. Yep. Okay. There's like two dozen touch the rock or a sign just, or something. Just games. like there's like two dozen Memorial Stadiums. Oh, but that doesn't apply to Indiana, does it? <laughs> yes, I know. It does. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Oh, uh, Indiana. What, so, what? What else about this? It's it. It's Notre Dame plays to... football in Indiana, Kyle. It's true. I, 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 mean, that, I, I that, just, that, that's that's as close as of a compliment I could I, get to the Hoosiers. I just think, really, this might be. This might be the worst Indiana roster wise that I've seen. Yeah. In quite a while. It's it's been really really bad. Yeah. No, this is this is this is a This is Indiana. Like we we saw Indiana sort of creep up the rankings there for a minute. You know, I think it was only a couple years ago we were talking about, you know, could Indiana be like the fourth best team in the East, which is saying something, I would say. You know, and we're we're not we're not at that point anymore. We were three years ago, twenty twenty. This was an Indiana team that went six and two, with wins over Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State, and Wisconsin. This twenty this twenty twenty count. It, it still counts. It, they, okay. It's count as wins. But looking back there, like Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State, Wisconsin, you're like, that's those are good wins for for one year. At um at Indiana, and then twenty twenty one, they only had two wins. Last year, they had four wins. Yeah, it's it's going to be tough for it's going to be a tough season for Indiana. Yeah, again, I I think there's a bottom three teams in the Big Ten, and Indiana is very firmly in that discussion. I would say tied with Rutgers, with Northwestern being clearly the worst team. Mm-hmm. Fair assessment, I'd say so. Yep. Uh, Buckeye Esquire, will a true freshman score for Ohio State in this game? Odds are decent. Yeah, um, odds are decent, yeah. Because, you know, I think Ohio State's going to... Let's let's talk a little bit more about Ohio State. Um, Kyle McCord announced today for us, we're recording this on Tuesday, um, today for us, Kyle McCord named the starter. Uh, there, there seems to be enough wishy-washy language to indicate that Devin Brown will still be getting not just snaps, but like competitive game snaps. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes me think that Ohio State might play their offense a little bit later in this game than maybe they would otherwise. They're going to try and get the quarterbacks out there, see what they do in a game situation in front of a big, in front of a crowd. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens and i and i think if you're if you're again if you're testing out your quarterbacks i think that increases the likelihood that maybe brennan ennis i I think would maybe be the first the first name i'd reach out to if we're talking about a freshman touchdown um potentially you know take one to the house uh so i would say decent i think Um, so especially i think if you want to, if you want to name of who's going to score that, perhaps for me, Jared, uh, I do Other like. Other than Ennis, our, 
other than Ennis. I, I like what um Woody in our in our chat said here about Colonel Tate. I think sure. I think you. I think maybe you want to put Marvin Harrison Jr. out there for that long, and then his backup it would be Carnell Tate. Maybe he'll see the field a lot to give more opportunities to to um, make some plays there. So I, I really like that uh, that name there. What is the most number of players to have rushing touchdowns in a single game asking in advance for Jerry Emig? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that question, but uh, it would probably be some sort of weird game where like two of the quarterbacks ran it in and a receiver and you know probably something. It normally takes something weird like that for that to happen. Yep, yep. I My mean, bad, Styles sh should be a freshman. Yes, yes, Styles should yeah. be a freshman. Uh, anything else here, Jerry, before we go into our... Um, um, go into our questions and then our um our picks here for the game sure um i don't know just any before we get in like any like what are you just hoping to see from ohio state I'm, like first game it's this is this is it we're we're it's been a long off season we get to watch ohio state no, play consistency is an answer from no, nomad i like nomad that answer right yep um what what are we looking for? And you guys can be as specific as you want. Kyle and welcome Kabuto. Kyle, be as specific or as vague as you want. Guys in the chat, I want to hear your responses as well. Like, what do you want to see from Ohio State this weekend? Uh, that, I think that's my question. Well, here, well, while we're waiting for some people to answer here, Jared, one big thing that we a shut down defense says Woody. I like that. One thing that we haven't even mentioned, Jared, one thing that we haven't mentioned and a lot of people uh, made a lot of comments in week zero games, it's the running clock. Like how, mu how much would the yeah. running clock actually affect Ohio State and their ability to run plays here? Like we're, we're used to Ohio State just doing the quick, quick, uh, quick offense here and barely using up any time. And how is that going to affect them this year? I mean, it, it's not going to affect them from that standpoint. I, I think where it could affect them, and this could be an issue with Notre Dame, who we saw has a good offensive line and a good stable of running backs, at least when playing in, in Ireland. We'll see if that translates to Indiana. Um, but I think what is interesting is if you have Ohio State and you have this high-powered offense – and you like to move quick and yada, yada, yada. What happens when you face a team like Notre Dame or a team like Michigan who might try and just time a possession you straight off the field? Mm -hmm. And Indiana is not going to be able to do that. Indiana does not have the offensive line to do that. Um, so that's not I don't think that's an issue for me in this game. But the running clock, I think, is definitely something that can work against Ohio State. Um, when facing a team that's capable, potentially capable of running you to death. Um, again, I don't. I think that'll be an interesting to interesting thing to watch through college football this weekend. Um, although I don't necessarily see that becoming a huge thing specifically in this game. Um, defensively, whatever whatever you want, Zach. Are you wearing the cocaine whites on our CBS debut? No. Or I, we're, I think we're wearing them. We're doing grays. The alternatives are grays this year. Have they announced an all white uni? I, I know they have announced an all gray uni. I don't know yeah, if we have no. a. I don't know if we have a good name nickname for those yet though. Yeah, that's, I'm sure that's, that's right, Jerry. Teams have practiced is... against the running clock since spring. Yeah, no, it's just it's just it's a new. It's it's just a new tweak to the rules that will change game planning. That's that's it. Uh, it'll be I don't I don't necessarily think it's going to throw teams off. Like I don't think it's going to cause like a bunch of time of possession penalties or anything like that. But it's a new wrinkle that can affect how coaches, especially more conservative, defensive 
run mind run minded coaches might manage football games. Uh, Chop Daddy says he wants to see what the offensive line can do. I'm with you on that. I'm very with you on that. When we get into our predictions, you'll you'll see that we are uh, lockstep on that one. Yep. All right. Well, let's let's jump right into that then, Jared. Sure. All right. So uh, this week, uh, our guest picker is uh, Woody in our Discord here. Um, so for those who have not listen to any of our know your enemies we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and um answer a few questions here um i state player to watch enemy player to watch key matchups pick the spread who the winner is our in our final score as well and we we have somebody in our discord who who plays along here they send us their picks and their anything they want to say in there as well and yeah it's it's a lot of fun here so let's let's jump right into that jared so the first one here is Ohio State player to watch. A lot of, a lot of names to pick from. A lot of excitement of, of how, of who's going to step up. Uh, obviously, the, the big one could be the quarterback. Could be Kyle McCord. Could be one of the number of wide receivers or the defense here. Who who do you got, Jerry? Going with Josh Simmons, aka Jimmy Simmons. Um, he got the nod to left tackle. I think. Um, Kyle and I think a lot of people, Kyle, Kyle and I included, really expected Josh Simmons to be right tackle and Josh Fryer to be left tackle. Uh, they saw something in Josh Simmons. Let's just say Simmons. They saw something in Simmons that um, decided that they wanted him at left tackle. The, the fear, of course, is that maybe they saw something in Fryer that they didn't want Fryer at left tackle. I think that's a fear. So the question is, does Simmons get moved to left tackle out of desperation or out of choice? Like, was, was this a preferential move or a desperate move? Uh, and, I, and I don't know. I don't know that. Um, I don't know that. Indiana has the horses to really test him as far as uh, I don't, there's not like a peak edge rusher on this, on this football team for Indiana, but you know, my eyes will be on the tackles probably, especially Jimmy Simmons, Josh Simmons. Um, but I'm going to be watching the offensive tackles a lot. As you typically do, Jared. <laughs> you're not wrong all right mine i'm going on the other side here i'm going to go with everybody's favorite uh everybody's favorite linebacker tommy pickles eichenberg i think i think in order for indiana to do well they're going to have to be able to to run the ball against ohio state and i think tommy eichenberg will um be up for the challenge there to uh to keep henderson in check enemy player to watch kyle who do you have uh josh henderson <laughs> i'll go with yeah. josh henderson is my player to watch here you just do you feel like you said enough about josh henderson earlier is that why you're yes okay yep. i don't need i don't need to say any more yeah he's a really good running back if, if he succeeds indiana will score some points there you go uh, I mean, I like Henderson. I, I don't know if he's, I don't know if Henderson, uh, I don't know if his success is completely in his own hands as far as uh, the Indiana offensive line goes. Sure. Uh, I'm going with Aaron Casey. Kyle talked a bit about Aaron Casey before. Um, one of the only like leading production guys from Indiana's defense returning this year. Led the team in tackles last year. Um, they're redoing a lot of their... They just did not return many guys on that defense at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the strength of the defense will be Aaron Casey. And like I said, a good crew of defensive tackles. Um, but I'm going to go with Aaron Casey. It's kind of funny. Last year, I picked Aaron Casey as my player to watch for Indiana. Did you? Who ended up 
I did, yeah. He ended up with 10 tackles, six of them solo, and a tackle for loss last year. That's a good day. That's a good day. It was. In a 56 to 14 uh, blowout. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like he had lots of, lots of opportunities to get tackles. It doesn't sound like... Um... Doesn't sound like he got a chance to rest much. Yeah, uh, that was when both uh, Mine Williams and uh, Dalen, Dalen Hayden, Dalen, I cannot talk, Hayden, <laughs> um, ran the ball a lot in that game. Yep. All right, key matchup, Jared. I, I kind of have a feeling where you're going with this, but I'm going to, I'll let you go at it. So I'm going to switch it up a little bit. We were talking about the offensive tackles. On our players to watch, you know, name name drop uh, Josh Simmons for me. Uh, but for the if I'm looking at a key matchup, I'm looking maybe more groups. Um, I've talked a lot about how Indiana has a good, a really good interior roster of defensive tackles. Um, so I'm looking at Ohio State's interior offensive line, who is uh for the most part, more experienced than the offensive tackles. Although, uh, do we have a, was it a, is Carlos Hinsman officially the center yet? I I think, I feel like that's, we've just all been sort of waiting for, yes, I'm getting multiple yeses. Carson, thank you. Carson Hinsman. I both got multiple yeses and a correction on his first name. Don't, I don't even know what I said. Guys, what did I even say? You're going to talk about your key matchup here. No, how I said Carlos? Weird. Carson Hinsman. Why would I say Carlos? Carson Hinsman. Um, it's just funny. Like someone point, every, I got two people immediately pointing out that I said the wrong thing. I'm like, what did I even like? If I, if I wasn't recorded, I'd swear I didn't. Anyway, yes, yes, I've been drinking. Um, <laughs> I'm actually super sober right now because I'm trying to lose weight. Uh, the interior offensive line, uh, again, we have a, a brand new center, um, experienced guards, but again, Indiana is like one of the few places where they have like good quality depth is at the defensive tackle position. So you'll see some guys rotate in there and, you know, we'll see what Hensman can do and we'll see if the guards are as ready as we hope they are. In mine, I'm going to be, I guess I'm going to be boring here because it's hard to really, my answer really, Jared, is just Ohio State being consistent and just not having these mental uh, breaks dur during the game where it's false starts or drop passes or missed assignments or whatever. I don't, I don't see how that's a matchup, though, if I'm being honest I, with you. I know. I know. Really, it should be Ohio right. State versus themselves, but... Okay, I'll give you that. Okay, okay. I, you, you fran okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But I, I'll just I'll just pick it. But so. I will say you get one of those this year, and you just yeah, used I'm not, it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not no, I'm not going to use it this in this game here. Uh, I'm just going to pick it. It's uh, Josh Henderson, um, Indiana's running back versus Ohio State's uh, uh, defensive line here. Like... Can, yeah. can can they can they keep Henderson under under four yards a carry here? I think if they can hold him under four yards, he, he's going to have a he'll have a good he'll have a um, it'll be really successful for this defense. Last year they did held him to under four. He had three point six yards per carry. So if they can do that again, I'd be happy. All right, Kyle. Here comes the part everyone's waiting for. Our last three predictions. The spread pick, Ohio State, according uh, to our CBS Sports Pick'em, is minus 28 and a half. Uh, mm -hmm. So we will be picking against the spread. We will be picking the winner. And we will be picking the final score. But, Kyle, before we do that, let's hear from Woody. Uh, Woody is our guest picker this week. He has uh, he picked our... Uh, so. Uh, if anyone's new to the Sloopcast, um, we do two episodes at the second half of the week on game weeks. Um, this is Know Your Enemy. Uh, tomorrow will be uh, the Sloop Picks. The Sloop Picks uh, will pick six additional games against the spread. Woody is our guest picker this week. Uh, so he's picking this game and he'll be picking six more games on uh our next episode so 
uh, Woody's introduction here. Uh, he's going to take the buck, guys, even if it's 30 points. Uh, who takes the first snap will not matter. Uh, Henderson and the Buckeyes defense will be the stars of the contest. Buckeyes win going away 51 to 10. 51 10. That's a that's an easy. That's an easy cover. That is an easy cover here. Um so we we locked in we locked on our spread at 28 and a half which is we we followed the uh CBS Sports Pickem and that's when they locked them in was at 28 and a half and as we we're recording here Jared it's up to 30 and a half now. That is not a surprise. Mm-hmm. I mean we we joke we kid yada 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 um but this indiana team is very very um talent deprived that's a, that's the nicest way i can say that all right kyle uh are you picking ohio state to cover 28 and a half points uh i am yes i am <laughs> okay i so uh, so so then obviously you're picking them to win I am. If you're picking them to cover, you're picking them to win. I have my I have my final score, Ohio State fifty five, Indiana seven. And I have, keeping with tradition. Even even if Spike's kind of uh, stole my thunder in the chat already. And if you don't know the tradition, do the math. Ohio State fifty nine, Ohio State ten. Although I think it's more likely to be 59 0, if I'm being honest. But let's go 59 10 because tradition, damn it. Yes. <laughs> All right, Jared. Uh, anything else before we move uh, move away from here and answer some of our, uh, our sloop cast questions? Yeah. And I think also as tradition, let's start with Austin's over unders. Remember, Kyle. And by the way, y'all can go find, I, I think it was either January or February of this year. Austin keeps track of these and will grade us at the end of the year. So Kyle, choose wisely. No pressure, right? <laughs> All no right, pressure. So Austin's been, uh, over-unders, edition number one for the season. Austin? Where is Austin? He's not even in here. I, he was busy tonight. No excuse. All right, over unders week one against Indiana. So he has here Trey Henderson scrimmage yards set at one hundred and forty four point five yards. Uh that feels like a lot. Um he is semi fresh off of surgery. Um I and I think I think Trey's gonna be great this year. I also think that they have a really deep roster of running backs and they'll probably spread it out. The one thing that the one thing that really scares me about picking the under here is that he breaks off like 75 yards in a single play, in which case I feel like I'm screwed as far as picking the under. Uh, But I am going to go ahead and pick the under because I just feel like Evan Pryor is going to get involved and I feel like. You know, mine's going to get involved like it's just going to or yeah, it's just going to be. I think it's going to be spread around a lot in order. It's just it's a little bit. I'm, I'm going to go under. Yeah, same here. Exact same reasons. I think they're they're going to see a lot of players on the field here. A lot of touches from different different players here. The only way I can see really see Trey getting that many yards if he breaks two two runs. Or screen. It's a scrimmage yard. That's true too. All right, next one. Where Josh, we're doing your we're we're doing your over unders. Yep. Josh Henderson. Twelve and a half carries. Uh over. I'm gonna go over on this one. Uh Kabuto, when I said screen, I was talking about a swing or or whatever as well. That's just it's and it's to the running back. No, I don't like the bubble screens. I'll take a running back screen. If the other team's blitzing, sometimes you gotta do a running back screen. It's it's just the smart thing to do. Um Josh Henderson carries uh I feel like he's like one of their 
actual offensive weapons, so I want to say over. But also, if they get down, and they probably will get down, like, quickly, maybe they go away from the run a bit. Um... Chat's killing me right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Henderson, uh, I'm going to go over, but I, again, I'm afraid that they, because it specifically carries. I wish it was touches. <laughs> um, if it was touches, if it was touches, I'd feel better with the over. <laughs> right, Marvin Harrison catches at six and a half. He had seven last year against the Hoosiers. Uh, I think you have uh, two young quarterbacks looking for a safety blanket. And I do blankets get any safer than Marf? I'm going I'm to I'm pick the over. I don't think it's over by a lot. I, I think mm-hmm. it's I think I think six and a half is is a lot. Um, seven or eight, but six and a half. That's a tough number. That, that is tough. That is tough. And you, you talk about a safety blanket. And yes, it definitely Marvin Harrison's definitely a safety blanket for any any quarterback. But who who typically does a uh, does a new or newer quarterback tend to go to? The guys underneath, which would lend you to think either a Mecca or Stover. There it is. Yep, I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking Stover may have. Uh, have some nice catches here. And it seems to be as tradition, Jared, at the start of every year, we There's always a... talk, we always talk about year of the tight end. And, then and it's always, always like, a September like, game. And it's always a September game. Yes. Where it's like Rutgers gets two touchdowns in a game or he gets three touchdowns in two games. Is this the year? Is this the year? Never the year. It's always no. the year, but it's never the year. Yes. <laughs> So I'm going to go under. I'll go under with Marv catches at six and a half. Total game turnovers at three and a half. It's a lot. Yeah, but it's but it's both teams though. It is. It is. I'm going to go over. I'm going. I'm going to go under here. Yeah, I'm going to go over. I'm feeling good about Ohio State's defense forcing a couple. Uh, on top of that, we have nothing but inexperienced quarterbacks in this game. Um, I'm gonna go over. Yeah, I like I like what um what I'm seeing here. Uh, Indiana has two turnovers. Ohio State has zero, something like that. Yes, Homer. All right, Tommy <laughs> Steele and Hicks tackles. So Tommy Steele and Hicks, all three tackles combined for twenty five and a half. It's a lot. Seems like a lot. And I kind of, kind of same thing with talked about Trey Sermon, (laughs) Trey Henderson. Wow. I don't know why I went there. Henderson with 144 and a half yards of scrimmage there. I think it's going to be the same thing with Tommy Steele and Hicks being in the game. All game here to get tackles for 25 and a half. I'm going to go under. I think there's going to be more players in to uh, to get more tackles. And I think we also need to talk about like the distinct possibility that Indiana might not have a ton of offensive plays in this game. Maybe. If the defense is playing as well as we want them to, and if the offense is playing as well as we want them to, they, they could be a really heavy time of possession swing on Ohio State side, which just leads to a lack of opportunities to rack up defensive stats. Um, so what that would that would have you'd have to get 26. So what is that? That'd be seven now eight. Like what? Nine for two of them, eight for a third. Feels like a lot. I'm gonna go under. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. Doing math live. By the way, for doing live podcast math, that wasn't bad. Y'all have no idea. Were you trying to do that with a camera and a microphone on you? It wasn't bad. Yeah. 
All right. Catches. Oh, yep. Catches by Ohio State. True freshman at three and a half. You know, I'm going to go over. Appreciate it, Spikes. I'm going to go over with three and a half catches for freshmen here. So, I mean, you got. I mean, you got uh, Carnell Tate. I think you're going to see some. I think you'll see a lot of action from him in here. Brandon Innes, I think you're going to see um, some good play time in here as well. Maybe Noah Rogers um, late in there. Yeah, I I think we'll see more than uh, three catches from the uh, from this don't, incoming freshman um, team here or freshman wide about, receivers. Don't forget about Thurman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Thurman at tight end, I think, uh, within the realm of possibility, gets a catch. And again, I think I think Day's going to try and get his two quarterbacks some game experience. But that doesn't mean you have to leave your wide receivers out there all game. So I, I think that there's a decent possibility that they're throwing later in this game than they would be if, you know, C.J. Stroud was still the quarterback, which I think, you know, l- lends to the possibility that, you know, you see mm-hmm. some freshman catches for sure. Yep. So you're going over as well? Yes. Yes, I am. All right. Last one is Abuka. Fleming and Cade Stover touchdowns at one and a half. And I'm I gonna go, f- I'll go over with this one here. That mentions, I, think, I think the tight end will get some good um, some c- good catches here in Ohio State, especially early on in the season. Love down in the deep in the red zone, throwing it to the tight ends there to get their one, two touchdowns in September. Only in September here. Only in September. <laughs> Month of the tight end. And then adding in there, Buka and Fleming getting a touchdown somewhere in there too. Yeah. We'll take the over. Yeah. I think, I think Abuka is like, I, I just, Abuka is going to get a touchdown in this game. Abuka is going to get a mm-hmm. touchdown in this game. Like go ahead and just like write that down. And you know, the possibility that either Fleming or Stover or a second for Abuka happen are decently high a return touchdown um worth noting that austin doesn't does not clarify what types of touchdowns so if a, if a mecca kyle returns don't a kick get my hopes up. A don't get my hopes up don't get my hopes up if you're new here kyle's been dying on this special teams touchdown uh drought which Kyle is it is it it's um Jaden Marshall still right it is yeah is that 2015 since the last time there was a punt or kick return touchdown and it's killing Kyle 2014 is when Jalen Marshall re- Jalen Marshall returned a putt re- punt return touchdown against uh Indiana in 2014 oh if you remember that was the year that was the year that that was the year when Ohio State when Indiana made it really close and then Jalen Marshall just went off and had I think he had like three touchdowns in that game including one of them was a punt return touchdown a punt return a reception and a throw or was it a run but it it was like three touchdowns was it an end around so it was a rush a Maybe. rush, a reception, and a return. Is that what it was? I know that there was not just three touchdowns, but three touchdowns, all mm-hmm. three separate categories. I just And then the last last time Ohio State had a kickoff return touchdown. The throw was in the UFL, you think? Yeah. That's a possibility. La- last time Ohio State had a kickoff return touchdown was in 2010 with Jordan Hall against Michigan. Yikes. All right, Kyle, we said we wanted to try and keep uh, Know Your Enemy to 40 minutes. Uh, we're already uh, creeping up on 45, so uh, let's snag tradition. a couple. Let's let's snag a couple Ask Sloopcast questions and then head on out. Sure. Um, Buckeye Esquire here asks, um, if it's a blowout, which two players, one on offense, one on defense, are you going to focus on for garbage time? Uh assuming assuming that ohio state is still going to have their i again i st- i think that the quarterbacks are going to be out there for a long time 
Uh, regardless of what the score looks like, one of the two quarterbacks will be out there for a long time. And if the quarterbacks are out there, then the starting offensive line is going to be out there. That, that's where my eyes are going to be all game. If, if Austin was in here, he, he'd love my answer here. I'm going to go with Evan Pryor. I'm going to go with Evan Pryor. I don't think some... you have to. I don't think you have to wait till garbage <laughs> time to see Evan Pryor. I would love, love to see Evan Pryor staying healthy and seeing what he can do. Because when we, when we seen, when you seen him healthy, man, he's, he is lights out, just fantastic with the ball in his hand. So I'm, I'll go with Evan Pryor on the offensive side, and then on the defensive side. Let's, you know, let's go with um. I, I think we'll see we'll see a lot of him in the um during the during the game here. But I'm going to go with Sonny Styles. I think we'll see a lot of him during the game. Yeah. And I think in garbage time, I'd like to really see him in the in one of the main safety positions there and see see how well he does. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, another question. Uh, another question here. Uh, over under. This oh, one in Nomads. Here. Um, actually, yeah, one in Nomads here. Actually, I like this one here. Does Styles get a turnover in this game? INT now, now, forced fumble. Now, here, not here, recovered, here, 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 forced. How about this? He said Styles. He doesn't say which one or both. <laughs> And he I assume says, that the plural of styles is styles. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I I think it's it's difficult to predict. <laughs> it's difficult to predict a turnover for an individual player, any individual player, no matter how, how good they are. So I'm going to say no. But like if I was actually betting money on it, I'd say no. Yeah, but, you know, just for just because we're on Ohio State podcast, I'm going to say yes, he gets a turnover. There you go, Kyle. Play into the crowd. <laughs> all right. Um. All right. One one last one here. Uh, Nomad asks, um, "Will there be a Ohio State fullback touchdown against Indiana?" I mean, there are not even any fullbacks on the team technically. No. So the answer is so, so no. but, but if it's a tight end lined up at fullback, I'd say that counts. But I also still say no. <laughs> yep, yep. All right. I think those are all the questions we can at, um, answer right now. So we'll, we'll kick it off to Jared to uh, end us off here. Uh, yeah, uh, everyone come join the Discord server. We are in full swing. Our gambling bot is up and live. These are all yes. fictitious coins. Just yes. to be clear, there is no actual money on the line, but there's a whole lot of bragging rights. Our uh, sloop picks are live. If you want to join our sloop picks, our online um, CBS pick em pool, um, you can do that. You can find all of the info in uh, the Discord server. And we have five new t-shirt designs in the Sloopcast store, uh, merch.thesloopcast.com. Fictitious. Yes. And no, there's no money. Uh, so, yeah. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? No, oh, since our last recording just a couple of days ago, it's... No, I'll, I'll just I'll just reiterate from our, from our Monday episode here... Uh, I best prayers and and uh, best of um and all the wishes and luck to uh, Sammy Sasso and his recovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, cosine and agree. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by the Raging Nathans. They're a punk band from my um, Dayton or Cincinnati. I forget which. I th think it's Dayton, but if but if you told me if it was Cincinnati, I'd believe you. Uh, so, uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, these are the Raging Nathans. Mm -hmm.